everybody, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Marketing Insights. I'm Yasha Harari. Um, well, <laughs> how's your uh, global lockdown going for the bug that apparently shall not be named? Um, over here, I am in a kind of somewhat lockdown state. Um, at the moment, it's uh, pretty quiet around where I am. I hope that it's safe and quiet where you are. Uh, there are cases not far from here, um, but uh, since everybody's in lockdown, hopefully that will not spread. Although there are still things happening, events and businesses are open and people go to work for necessary jobs and all kinds of things that are actually still causing this thing to spread. So, um, <clears throat> the world finds itself in a kind of odd predicament, right? Um, so let's start off with the good news about all this, right? Um, we're nearing the end of March in the northern uh, hemisphere. Temperatures are slowly starting to rise and uh, the end of the flu and cold and flu season hopefully will arrive in the next month or so. And, um, well, maybe the next couple of months, depends on how, you know, <laughs> seasonal allergies and everything else, but temperatures, rising warmer climates, we'll see if it has any impact, you know. Um, and the really one good piece of news from all this, and it's very strange, but it's a kind of interesting thing, is if you think about this, this is the first time in human history that any event has caused literally all of humanity to be on one side of an issue against something that isn't caused by people. I mean, well, isn't caused by people. It isn't, we're not fighting against people here, <laughs> right? Maybe humans caused it, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you support the lockdowns, maybe not. I don't know. But one thing is for sure, everybody wants this thing to go away, right? That is a first. That's a significant first um, in human history, right? People have literally put aside nationality, at least where I can see it, um, borders and all that kind of nonsense in an attempt to defeat a supposed global pandemic um, or a global pandemic, according to the World Health Organization. And hey there, they are who they are, so I'm going to call it what, it, what they call it. Um, and it's the first time that this kind of event has triggered this kind of a swift response, literally on a global level, um, and for such an extended period of time, right? Now, I would say that that's probably the best news that we can look at about this entire event. Um, <laughs> as far as the rest of it goes, I'm not so thrilled and I'm sure nobody else is, right? The economy is down, prices of things like Bitcoin or gold or, you know, whatever are fluctuating like crazy. There's a lot of volatility. You know, yes, some assets have risen nicely after their significant drops, um, but nothing is really, you know, well, very few things are shining like a stellar beacon of hope and success at this very moment in time. And there's still a lot of uncertainty and there's still a lot of hopium. And now that there's a couple trillion dollar stimulus package coming, there's a lot of additional hopium, but there's also a lot more doubt. Right? People are saying, well, if you're printing this much cash, you're going to kill um, the value of the dollar. Well, if the value of the dollar is anyway based on nothing except the word of the U.S. government, what exactly does it have in terms of a value, right? And I'm not anti-dollar or anything. I'm just saying when you tell me uh, there's only a few trillion dollars currently in liquidity and circulation and suddenly there's going to be 10 trillion um, and then you tell me that therefore the dollar won't be worth anything and that therefore there's going to be a run on the bank but there won't be enough money in the banks all i have to say to that is well hang on if there's going to be 10 trillion now in liquidity that's going to cover far more than all of the active deposits of three four five trillion whatever is currently 
in deposits in bank accounts across the US and around the world with US dollars as the currency, right? And in addition to that, um, the amount of money that the Fed prints is relative, right? Because other countries are also going to increase their printing game. Look at the European um, Union. They're going to start printing tons of um, money and they're, they're going to start selling Corona, uh, what's the word? Uh, the beer bond or the beer virus sickness bond. I don't want to say it. Uh, YouTube is very explicit about that. Not that I monetize these videos because I, I don't actually. Um, um, and not enough people listen to them anyway. So it would, they, you know, there's no monetization available, uh, really. Um, but for those of you who do listen, that thing that's floating around the world is causing not just a lot of damage to this short-term economic, you know, spike to the downside or drop to the downside. Um, and it's not only causing a lot of opportunity for smart money as to when to buy in lower prices, etc. cetera. Um, it's also causing a lot of massive disruption and pain for a lot of people, you know, millions of people who are losing their jobs already. We have millions more unemployment claims in the last, week than before, uh, or in the last month than before. Um, it's up significantly since a long time, right? U.S. jobless numbers. Um, and we're likely to see more of that. So for all the people who are jumping up and down saying now is the time for Bitcoin to decouple from the rest of the market, um, I ask you, with what money are people who are now all jobless and stuck at home supposed to suddenly buy a bunch of Bitcoin and other cryptos, right? And I love crypto. I love Bitcoin. I think it's fantastically useful. But, um, like, people are out of jobs. Where, <laughs> what money do you expect them to have to spend? Do you think they're going to burn their assets and convert them all to Bitcoin? I mean, what? Like, people are going to go sell everything they have to buy crypto, or are they going to keep dollars which they know they can use at the store to buy whatever they can get, right? Um, and again, I don't believe the dollar is going to zero anytime soon because it's based on nothing anyway, and it has been since the early 70s. And the dollar has proven that since every other currency is pegged to it, um, it will probably be one of the last to fall, or <clears throat> it will only really fall when other currencies and other nations stop pegging themselves to it, right, and find other solutions. Um, one of those other solutions is obviously cryptocurrency, right? And I'm sure you've heard the meme by now that the World Health Organization is saying um, cash and fiat um, are an easy transmitter of, of the thing that you're not supposed to say. Um, on YouTube videos of the disease that's floating around, right? Um, therefore, filthy cash, filthy fiat, a constant meme for crypto lovers since forever, uh, is now actually a meme run by the actual government and uh, institutions in charge of managing the so-called world health. Well, um, so now they're basically advocating the use of a digital dollar, right? Oh, what a surprise. Who who called this? A lot of people called this. This was very obvious when things like XRP refused to take off with their partnerships and their, um, you know, deals with banks and all these other wonderful things they claim to be doing in 2016 and 17 and 18 that they just simply failed to deliver in 2019. And they've continually failed to deliver in 2020. And um, now, well, you know, good luck, right? Um, maybe they'll, I'm, I don't think they're just going to disappear right away, but um, <laughs> the situation is not good for banks, right? But on the other hand, uh, but it's also great, like, again, because of infinite cash, right? They're not solvent at the moment, but that is literally the matter of printing up paper or just putting numbers into people's accounts and assuring them that their money is safe by doing things like limiting any runs on banks, which, oh, by the way, banks do. All right, so if you think 10 million people are going to show up tomorrow 
at your local branch and remove every penny that the entire bank has, it, it's highly unlikely to happen in the US or in Europe or in Japan um, or in any other of the G8 countries. Why? Because, again, the banks will simply close if there is a run on dollars and any local currency, right? Um, and again, the amount of money being added into the cash pool, right? It's not like all that money goes directly into the hands of consumers, right? Obviously, right? <laughs> Would that it were. Sure, there's some of it's going to go out the tax breaks and all these uh, instant emergency cash fund bonanza that's happening right now. But what does it really mean? Um, when you have the U.S. adding two trillion, well, Europe's going to add a trillion or two, I'm sure, of their own um, in their own ways, and other countries are going to add their own money in their own ways in relative proportion. They need to. Right? Are they going to add as much proportionally as the U.S.? Maybe some will. Maybe some won't. Maybe some will add more, maybe some will add less, right? Maybe some will add the exact same amount. Then they will stay identically pegged to the U.S. as they are now. But for the most part, um, you will see action um, in the prices of currencies, in the basket of currencies. But all in all, they will not destabilize each other to the point of no return just yet. Why? Because they still have ample amounts of paper they can print. And as long as people, in general, keep buying this nonsense that everything is fine, um, in terms of the market stability and the banking system stability, and as if they know how to govern the money that they are governing, um, and as more importantly, as long as the governments still have the guns, you can count on fiat being around, right? As long as it's the choice of the government's way of making money available to people because the government collects taxes in its fiat. Therefore, people in each jurisdiction have to have that local currency. Otherwise, they cannot pay their taxes, right? Um, so these are things that you cannot overlook when you think about, oh, this is Bitcoin's opportunity to rise from the ashes and to, you know, overtake everything. No, <laughs> like that's just foolish. Um, can we expect to see Bitcoin rise nicely in value and usage over the next few years on the given long-term trajectory? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's starting to turn down a little. Maybe it'll keep going up. The likelihood is you probably will make money um, if you hold it for a few years or more. But this is a very young asset. So calling out prices a few years from now is extremely extremely uh well i mean it's just you're just crystal balling <laughs> you know there's there's no ta really that can or there's no fundamental analysis or technical analysis or any other scientific way to tell anyone what's going to happen three years from now um you know not even three days from now let alone three years from now right like if three weeks ago you would have been told that the entire world is going to be pretty much locking themselves in for the better part of a few months or more, and that there's going to be trillions of dollars added to liquidity within a matter of days, um, you probably would have laughed at whoever told you that, right? But here we are. Like, that has happened, right? And how convenient that if you are locked away and you disagree with these policies, you can't go out and protest, right? You can gather online. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the government really cares about a million people hanging out on Zoom. And by the way, why is Zoom getting all the attention for video sharing? They're like the worst. I mean, well, they're not the worst, but they're a pretty bad video sharing network. Um, I know some businesses love them, but they're not the best. Um, and certainly not the cheapest because there's free ones that are frankly better. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, Skype or Google, whatever it's called, Hangouts or uh, FaceTime or there's no shortage of free video applications you can use to hang out with your friends. Uh, but for some weird reason, I think it's because all the grown-ups who have jobs in high tech companies are home now and a lot of them are used to Zoom. So they're kind of like pushing it on people, on everyone that they're now chatting with and, you know, they're used to doing whatever they do at work. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment below. Why is Zoom 
this video sharing network that people are talking about a lot in, cur in this uh, current time. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, again, I got nothing against Zoom. I just don't think that they're very that they're the best. That's for sure. But uh, there's definitely some meme value to that. Anyway, uh, in terms of memes, by the way, like there's a lot of action, right, in memes. I mean, there's no shortage of great memes from the burr memes to, you know, the printing press of the Fed just constantly printing infinite cash and the guy who said it and uh, all the lockdown stuff and all the, you know, all the, all the other viral humor. I guess this is really the perfect time for viral humor, so to speak. Um, pardon the pun, but don't. Um, <laughs> just enjoy it, I hope. Um, and, you know, l understand that now, as like if you're a marketer and you're listening to this still, uh, wow, 15 minutes into this video already, um, first of all, you're like hardcore because probably everyone else has left the video by now, for sure. Uh, but if not, um, and you really want to know what the heck is going on as a marketer that is useful about this whole situation, well, here we go, okay? Like, <clears throat> I've been saying since this thing was starting and before, um, that this kind of disruption in the system can cause not only a lot of power grabbing that people can't protest against, again, and they can meet online, but again, governments aren't really going to care if a million people like or follow something online. They're just not going to change things. But if a million people show up and start protesting, that kind of changes stuff, right? But they can't now. They can't leave their homes to protest. No one can protest any of the actions of all these bad actors. No one can stand up and say, this is wrong, right? This entire election campaign, for example, in the United States is happening now in 2020, the entire campaign for all the people running for office, for example, in politics, it's completely, like, decimated, right? There's, I mean, you can't even go to a political rally if you wanted to participate in the system. So you're literally going to make votes now. You're going to see people voting in November of you know 2020 in the U.S. by people who are completely uninformed or who whose only information has been warped by the echo chamber that, and the rabbit holes that they go down when they are online every day, stuck at home, with little else to do but go crazy being stuck at home, right? Um, and for the better part of this year, if that's the mentality of people being stuck at home, then even if they get out of their homes by June, July, August, if you've only got August, September, you know, and October left to get your head cleared and then pull a voting lever, you're not probably going to be in the best state of mind to make that decision clearly, even though it's your right and your responsibility and your privilege as a citizen of whatever country gets to vote, right? Um, it's probably going to make a lot of weird things happen in the elections for whoever is running for whatever offices. That's all I'm saying. This will definitely impact that, right? There will be an, an impact from this situation spreading around the world um and it won't all be good in fact not that i've said much that's so terrific or optimistic but it will definitely be a lot of bad things um and with that said you know think about all the power grabbing that's happening think about all the liberties that are being taken away so again, as a marketer, how can you make use of this if your liberties are being taken away, if people's liberties are being taken away, if businesses' liberties are being taken away, if businesses are literally being told to stop doing business for X amount of time, right? That's going to impact employment. That's going to impact things like the gig workers, right? People who drive on Uber or make gigs on Fiverr or, you know, whatever they do, they, you know, Airbnb, all these things, right? they're all going to be negatively impacted, right? But they're all going to be positively impacted eventually, if not sooner rather than later, because gig economy marketplaces are actually built for bad recessions and bad depressions and bad economic cycles. I mean, that really is, if you think about it, their best use case, right? Like when your business is down in the dumps and you need to get stuff cheap because that's the only way you can afford to get it out to the consumers, well, those marketplaces offer you tangible solutions and practical ways to actually get your business done and save you, you know, a bundle in terms of time and money and effort and resources and everything else. But of course, that means that the people making the money on those sites 
are generally getting less money than they would if they had a full-time employment in that same job or you know profession at a job, right? Sure, it's better than nothing, um, and some people make a ton of money as gig workers, but most people don't, right? They barely break even, or they break even, but they they, they don't you know they don't make a ton of money, right? Um, and some people, it's just extra cash, you know, it's not they're not going to be able to live on it, right? Because they don't make enough sales in it, and they don't want to be full-time freelancers, and it's not easy, and so. Um, this is going to have, again, some very strong indications of how the economy is doing when we see these gig economy type jobs uh, either exploding in number or going away like crazy. And I don't think you're going to see them go away like crazy because right now you got people stuck at home with literally nothing better to do. They may as well sell their services online. Right. That's why I think you're seeing things like, um, you know, various stocks and, and of companies like this, even though they did take a huge dump relatively in recent weeks, some of them have actually come back pretty strong. They're not yet back to where they were, but they're clearly showing indications that they probably will continue to go up, um, even if there is more dumping along the way in the market. Again, I'm not a financial analyst, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not telling you what to invest in or trade in or anything like that, and that's all risky stuff anyway, you shouldn't do it if you don't do your own research and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm not, this is not a finance show, this is a show about marketing and marketing insights related to crypto. And, and you know, this is going to be a major impact for marketers of crypto projects or marketers who use crypto. Why? Because now you have a massive opportunity to put into play your longer term action plans, your longer term marketing strategies and your shorter term marketing tactics to get quick wins right now while the market is still relatively down in the dumps. And even if it falls again by half, right, let's say Bitcoin dumps to 3000 or $2,500, right, more than half. Um, that would be an amazing opportunity in my view as a marketer um, to have the ability to acquire more Bitcoin for your project and other solid cryptocurrencies in order to expand your marketing resources as you grow. Uh, because the more Bitcoin you have, obviously, the better it will be for you in the long term, I believe. Again, my opinion. Um, and I mean that as a marketer, right? Like the more Bitcoin you take in for revenues, even if you calculate it in dollars, over time, if you're able to hold on to that Bitcoin and not convert it to dollars, I think it's going to be worth significantly more for your organization. So your profitability will actually be much higher in three years. Like your 2020 profits, if you keep it in Bitcoin, could be significantly higher by 2023, 2024, right? If you just hold it in Bitcoin, unless you're business needs that revenue, all of the revenue, you should keep whatever portion you don't need to convert, I think, or, you know, whatever portion you can keep without tremendous risk, right, um, as Bitcoin, because it will significantly raise in value and increase your business's value as holding more of a very scarce, finite resource that is immutable, uncensorable, unconfiscatable, and all these other, you know, divisible, transportable, portable, transmissible, the whole deal um, and having more of that scarce asset will likely be more valuable over time, at least until an extremely, supremely better technology comes to the market, right? Like if it's just something that's five or 10 or 20% better, it's obviously not going to outperform Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the early market dominance, has the early lead. And it basically has um, first mover advantage that is significant and not easy to overcome, right? But if you had something that came along that was a thousand times better than Bitcoin and instantly able to, you know, morph the entire Bitcoin network you know, very easily and lightly and scalably and was, you know, infinite, whatever, how all, it, everything about it was all the wonderful superlatives you could throw at it. Well, then, of course, you know, Bitcoin can be outperformed and can lose its top dog status. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, and, and again, even if Bitcoin did lose its top dog status, that doesn't mean it would go to zero. Right. 
it means it would go to wherever the market determines it should go next, right? If it's just outperformed by something, well, there's obviously more than one crypto on the market, right? Um, and I think so far we've seen that the top dog is yet to be displaced because this is still such a new space, right? Like the global branding, you know, people might be aware of the name Bitcoin, roughly, but not everybody knows what it means. Not everybody understands what it is or how it works or how you get it or how you sell it or how you trade it or how you do anything with it, right? Or what the use cases are. Like, how do I buy my groceries with your Bitcoin, right? Not everybody can go buy groceries with Bitcoin. You don't necessarily live near a place that accepts Bitcoin, right? Um, so, you know, we are still at incredibly early times, even though we are 11 years into this technology revolution, whatever you want to call it. And for us to not take advantage of this opportunity as marketers is to really be missing the boat, which is why I think, you know, as a marketer, long term, I am extremely bullish on Bitcoin, not that the price is going to go to the moon. or I don't care about the price. Again, I care about as a marketer, being, you know, yes, I think it will go up in value over time, as I've said. I don't care if it reaches 100,000 or a million or whatever pipe dream numbers people throw out there. It, it, it is completely irrelevant. If you get an asset to a number that is very uh, tradable and consistently tradable and is a strong liquid asset that is a recognized and relied on you know, part of the market, um, then it doesn't really matter what that price is, right? The volatility and everything else will settle down over time. It'll become less volatile. It already has since its beginning, right? And it used to be quite normal to have 50% movements in a day. Now it's quite unusual to have 50% movements in a day in the price of Bitcoin, right? That happens with any new asset. Right? The newer it is, the easier it is to make bigger movements because it's worth less. And the more it's worth over time, the harder it is to make those bigger movements, right? That's pretty simple. Um, so now is an important time if you're marketing crypto. It's a really important time right now to be digging in. Right now when everybody else is saying, ah, forget that. I'm just going to take time off at home. I'm still getting paid by my job. I'm going to work a little bit less. I'm going to take it easy a little bit because, you know, lockdown and chill and all these other hashtag things, um, you know, this is exactly the wrong mentality to have if you want to succeed as a marketer. You need to put in the time now when the rest of the world is crying and saying, oh, it hurts. Like, yeah, that's when you push forward. This is when you make a difference in the quality of your life as a marketer, right? Or in anything else, I guess. But I talk about marketing. So this is the time, right? I love bear markets. I absolutely love them. They are the number one way to tell what is the quality of a company, a project, a person in terms of work, output, production, value, return on investment, profit, the whole deal. Why? Because it's exactly when the chips are down and you start pushing the way forward and pushing the ball up the hill that you actually make a difference. You push yourselves to newer, higher, bigger levels, right? And you simply can't do that when it's in a bull market. When it's in a bull market, all you can do is just keep throwing whatever money you can scramble together at the assets you keep, you know, the assets you want to trade, right, or invest in. But every time you do, it's more and more expensive because you're in a bull market. So you actually have less opportunity in a bull market to make significant gains. You have more opportunity in a bear market because you can buy things when they're cheaper, right? I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but I guess, you know, people fear the bear and they're thrilled about when prices are going up because they see that they're, you know, meager little investment from when times were, you know, just starting to tick up. Um, are going up. So great. Wonderful. And I'm not telling people to buy or sell when prices are going up or down again. That's not what this show is about. As a marketer, when chips are down, that is your opportunity to make a huge difference. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts on this, uh, whatever day this is. I think that we're where I am, or at least a good 10 days, almost two weeks into the lock. Yeah, I think tomorrow is going to be two weeks into the lockdown. 
Um, I'd love to know what's going on where you guys are and, uh, you know, share if you want in the comments. Uh, I'd love to know more importantly, what you think of as a marketer, you know, is this an opportune time for you to be rolling out marketing strategies, like to be actually trying to acquire new customers right now? Are you working harder than usual if you're marketing or are you working less hard than usual? Um, have you been let go? Um, are, are you looking for work? Are you, are you seeing a lot of your colleagues losing their jobs or are you relatively safe and well ensconced in your position? And if you are good for you, it may remain so. Uh, but if you are having a hard time, um, you know, feel free to drop me a message. I'm happy to lend an ear. And also if you're in marketing and you need any kind of, you know, um, there's anybody that I might be able to introduce you to or anything like that. Um, as a fellow marketer in this industry, well, we're all here as a community. So drop me a message. I'll be happy to you know, help people with uh, any way that I can. I've certainly been in this industry long enough to, uh, to know a lot of interesting and wonderful people um, that are also a lot of them going through similar difficulties, but some of them are at uh, great positions and they're actually hiring, right? Uh, not every company is firing. I mean, you probably heard Amazon had to hire a hundred thousand people just to keep up with the immediate extensive you know, demand growth because tons of retail shops can simply no longer supply the things that the average day-to-day -day purchaser needed to buy. And oh, how convenient is that, um, that all of a sudden Amazon is the top dog retailer online and now all of a sudden it's pretty much the only authorized, I mean, not only, but it's a significantly oversized <laughs> player in the um, e-commerce uh, space and they are going to be basically uh, an increasingly important deliverer of goods to people who are locked away in their homes and we will be increasingly dependent on Jeff Bezos and his army of drones and delivery uh, supply methods um, to get our day-to-day -day stuff into our houses you know and that's a problem right like we're literally centralizing more and more just as exact, just exactly as crypto marketers are saying, we need to decentralize, and the powers that be, and I've always said this, are not going to let crypto decentralize everything. And here we have a perfect example of it. And again, I'm not saying anyone created this situation um, on purpose for any malif malignant reasons uh, or malfeasance, but they certainly aren't going to let it go away, right? Like. No politician is going to pass up a terrible event. They're all going to exploit it as much as possible. Right? There are plenty of diseases floating around the world at any given time. Right? We don't all lock ourselves up because of uh, you know, any other disease. <laughs> that has never happened before. And this is not, by any measure, the most dangerous disease we've ever faced. Like, not even close. Right? It is not the most contagious, it is not the most lethal, it is not the most anything. Yes, it's bad, yes, it's dangerous, yes, you should take it seriously. You know, yes, people at risk should take extra precautions and stay safe. And people who know people at risk should be extra careful not to put them in any higher risk, right? But ultimately, this is a, you know, a moderate virus, let's call it. It is not the worst virus the world has ever seen by any measure, right? Yes, it's spreading quickly, but viruses do. <laughs> Viri spread, right? Especially when they are spread through mucus and other things. Um, so, you know, we have suddenly shut ourselves down um, for the foreseeable future. And the economy and everything else is going to heck. And I think there's a lot of hopium out there that's pushing people to say, no, 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 it's this bad thing is going to be short lived and you'll see the liquidity ejection is going to fix everything. Um, I, I don't think so. I think the shock hasn't even begun, really. I, I, I hate to say it. And I don't want to sound like a doomsday person, but. And maybe we will manage to avoid a Great Depression, right? Or a huge recession. But every indication already says we're in recession. Or we're, in, you know, immediately dropping into it. And recessions usually last, what, three months to two years? Depends on the recession. 
um, at the minimum three months, and it's very, very, very unusual. No, sorry, six months, right? Because you need at least two quarters of positive growth of 2% or more to not be in a recession anymore. Um, so at least six months, right? And it's going to probably be longer. So when you hear this nonsense about they're going to bail out the economy for a month or two, that is irrelevant. Like, even if we get out of our homes in three months, the state of things will be so radically different. There is no way we are going to just be able to pick up where we left off. Because there's tons of business that just won't be around anymore. Tons. Right? Lots of your competitors will not be around in a few months. Because they're not going to be able to make payroll this month or the next or the month after that. And then their investors, if they have any, are going to say, um, we're not going to keep paying you to do nothing. Right? Businesses are going to shut down. It's already happening. People are already losing their jobs. Uh, yes, China is trying to reopen. Well, China is the factory of the world, and they can treat people horribly and not really care. So, and also, um, they're going to see another explosion of this disease if they all go back to work suddenly. So that's not going to help them, right? Um, why? Because they're still seeing new diseases, new, new, new cases in China. It's not like it's all gone to zero, and they're still seeing cases in every other country. Right? They, they haven't stopped it. These lockdowns have always said will not stop it. It, will, it may slow it down. You may, quote-unquote, flatten the curve, as every expert is touting, but it's not going to stop it, right? So the question is, how fast can they get the remedy to this thing, and how fast can they get it out into the market and make sure that everybody who needs it has it before they, you know, suffer fatality? Um, so again, we're giving away our economy because of a bug. We're giving away our freedom to movement, because of a bug. We've given away our freedom of assembly because of a bug. What other liberties are we willing to give away because of this bug? Like, seriously, ask yourself that. How, how far will you go to get rid of a bug? I mean, if they start saying, well, you know what, in order to really get rid of this bug, we should probably not feed people in the poorest countries because we can use the extra food money to make more medicine. Like, what What would you say to that? Right? Well, and you think it won't happen? Like, when they locked down India, which is the fifth of the planet's population or so, um, and they locked down China, which is also a fifth or a quarter of the world's population, um, that's not something they can easily sustain. There are a lot of underreported things happening in those places because there is such vast poverty, there is simply no way to cover it properly. There is just no way you will ever actually know the total damage that this has caused in just those two countries, let alone the rest of the world. So to think that we are somehow going to magically bub, you know, bubble above uh, the depression-looking numbers we saw starting to attack the economy a couple weeks ago, um, I think that's seriously misguided. And again, I'm someone who long-term wants to see the success of things like cryptocurrency and, in general, the economy. I'm all for capitalism, and it's wonderful, and I think people should... Buy more stuff if it makes them happy, right? Like, hey, why not? That's how markets and economies work and grow. But, you know, we have to remember cycles get bigger and broader and more violent over time because of the nature of the growing population on the planet, the growing demand for resources, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, you know, the growing amount of resources the growing amount of supply, you know, it's like there's no, there's a constant back and forth. And as the numbers of people increase, the back and forth swings just simply get bigger, bigger or longer or both. Um, but at the same time, this does go to show that we have reached in one sense, whether you like it or not, one event of global governance. 
And I can hear all the anti-one-worlders right now shrieking and gnashing their teeth and screeching their fingernails on the chalkboard, screaming at the horrors of a one-world government, a globalist government, and all that kind of stuff. But this is a one-world event that has just happened and is happening right now. Whether you like it or not, this is a globalist event, right? Doesn't mean it was triggered by globalists, but it literally fits, I mean, all of the agenda items in the globalist handbook, right? And again, I'm not saying that this is triggered by globalists, and I'm not saying that globalists are a particularly malfeasant bunch of people or anything like that. I'm just saying this literally fits every single checkbox they have on their list. It ticks them all off, right? And to not see that is to, I don't know, not read their agenda, which is clearly posted in many different places. Um, the idea of a global government managing people's welfare and health and everything else, day-to-day -day activities, location, you know, we've seen now in places like in, uh, in Israel, they have an app that tells people if you've been near somebody who has the virus, but it can't possibly know that unless literally every single person in its borders of the country of Israel has the app installed, right? And every single person who's sick is somehow registered along with their phone number as being so. And that they have their phone with them at all times. So really all it is is a spying device. And there's plenty of those in the world. Every country has their own. Poland now has one where they have an app where you have to take a picture of yourself every so many minutes, whenever the government decides there's a national emergency and you're going to have to take, like, they haven't made it a rule that you have to do it yet, but the app is being, I think it's being developed or deployed already, and it will be at some point in the future that you have X number of minutes to send in a photograph of wherever you are to the government via the app to prove that you're not with other people or isolating yourself socially. I mean... Big Brother much? Like, that's a horrible, horrible, horrible invasion of your privacy. <clears throat> They're literally going to want to look at where you are to make sure you're not around other people at the time that they request a photo of you. And that, it, you know, these things may all seem like small potatoes, little things to give away that don't bother you in your day-to-day -day life anyway you're locked at home, right? But they really do. Because when you come out of this, and you will come out of this, your life will not look anything like it looked before. Our lives will be different. Your field of competition will be different. Your opportunities will be different. Your risk and reward will be different. All of these things, the underlying fundamentals of the market, will be different. Why? Because there will now have been this entire episode. Will it have changed things like what is, you know, what are annual forecasts? No, it will not change those underlying fundamentals. But it will change the underlying fundamental statistics of what has actually happened, right, in the charts. And they always say, when you look at market charts, you know, past performance is not an indication of the future. Correct. But past performance is an indication of what has happened and what is likely to possibly happen again. So we are likely to see more ups and downs. We are likely to see more of them forever, as long as there are markets. Right? But that's good. That's the nature of cycles. So as a marketer, this is the moment. While all of your competition is falling, this is the moment for you to seize the day. This is the moment for you to put it in play and make it work for you. Get your messaging out, build your branding, develop your strategy, develop your communications, build your website, get your SMS systems built up with Twi you know whatever whatever you're lacking currently, now is your perfect opportunity while literally locked at home to improve your marketing situation and to do the things that normally fall by the wayside and you sweep them under the rug, hoping, oh, I'll get to them someday, but you never do. But now there's nothing else to do. Right? Except do the things that move everything forward. Because there's no customers walking through your door. There's, maybe there's people coming online and buying stuff from you. But unless you sell something that's really essential to day-to-day -day life, 
you're probably seeing your sales tank right now. And of course, I know Netflix and other things like that are necessary for day-to-day -day life, especially when you're locked up, right? But I mean, whatever you sell, if you sell dry goods, wet goods, doesn't matter what, um, supplies for living indoors, whether that's content, whether that's tangible goods, it doesn't matter. You're selling something to people. If you're selling things that people don't absolutely need in lockdown, you're for sure hurting right now. And if you sell something people do need in lockdown, well, even if you're hurting right now, there's a very good chance times are going to get very good for you very quickly as demand picks up. Whereas people run out of supplies they bought when they realized they had to go into lockdown. So they bought everything they could, went into lockdown, and when they realized, oh wait, I only bought enough for like three weeks or two weeks because my fridge isn't that big and now I need to go back out anyway. Uh, there's going to be more rushes at more stores, even if there's no current need for that because there's plenty of supply chain still happening. But you're going to see less supply chain happening as more and more people go on lockdown. You're going, to get, you're going to get less delivery of goods on time to the market, right? So, again, very bearish all of this is from a marketer's perspective. But that is hugely opportunistic for any smart marketer. When the chips are down, this is when you don't give up. This is when you push forward. This is when you, again, let the competition fall by the wayside. And, you know, the result is that you'll be able to tell the difference between the boys and the men or the people, uh, the children and the grown-ups. <laughs> Let's be gender equal and all that stuff. Um, you'll be able to tell the difference between the winners and the losers, basically, right, <laughs> at the end of all of this. And I guarantee you that a lot of the winners you're going to see, probably most if not all, are those who are around now, pushing forward now, when everybody else is running. They're dumping, they're panicking, they're doing, they're sitting there confused, they don't know what to do. Right? The ones who push forward now and don't give up and keep pushing forward. I'm not selling this to you as a hopium for a marketing project, right? I'm saying if you're doing something useful in marketing right now, already, before this nonsense happened, this is your opportunity to make the huge difference to the next level, right? So um, I'm not going to pitch you on how I can do all of that for you. That's not the purpose of this video, right? Like, I think it's quite obvious that <laughs> since I'm running a marketing channel and a marketing agency that this is my bag of tricks. This is my bailiwick. This is my tool set, whatever you want to call it. So I'm not going to go into all the reasons you should do whatever you want to do. If you want to do more, you figure it out yourself. If you're a professional marketer. You know, if you actually need um, additional hands or professional consulting or anything like that, there's plenty of great marketers and agencies you can contact. Of course, you can contact mine as well. I don't care if you do or if you don't. Um, what I care about is that the people that listen to this content learn something from it as marketers and implement it and make a difference because marketing is vital to the economy. And I'll say that again. Marketing is vital to the economy. Right? Marketing is usually one of the very first canaries that gets whacked when times go wrong. I can tell you that having seen a number of recessions right, and in marketing. But when times get good, it's also one of the first things that goes back. And that's why if you're a serious marketer, if you have true grit, true perseverance, this is the time as a marketer for you to push forward. And on that note, folks, um, I'm just going to wrap this up and say thanks again for listening. Hope you appreciate um, the content that I put out. Well, more, I don't know, you know, I hope you get something out of it. Hope you enjoy it. And if you do, yippee, um, feel free to be nice um, <laughs> and say something nice about it or show someone that you think should see it or, you know, whatever. Uh, but most importantly, if you actually listen to now, wow, thanks. You're awesome. I hope you are, um, you know, going to have the most amazing year marketing. 
And uh, that's it for now. So just stay safe. Enjoy the lockdown. Please let me know what you're doing. Feedback in the comments. Um, join me on my Discord or on my Telegram. Um, you can find all those things in the links and the, the, the channel pages. i got a bunch of places you can find us online. And I'm always, always, always happy to be making content for you guys and girls and everybody else that listens to me talk about marketing and crypto. So yay. And once again, thanks for listening to Crypto Marketing Insights. Until next time, folks, take care.